I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation on whose land we gather tonight for elders past, present and emerging and also elders from uh, other lands and peoples who are here tonight and also acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and that therefore the original law still runs through the land and I'm grateful to those who are listening to that still. So um, my background, as we said, I, I started off my career in, um, in law and, and towards justice in the social justice area. So working in legal aid and I, I suppose what it would be called is um, poverty law. So you're dealing with those uh, in legal aid who don't have access, they're on, on the edges of everything. So it's crime, it's family violence and it's families who are broken. So that's, I worked in that initially for the first part of my career. And that's, that was focused very much on broken relationships. And as a lawyer, you come in and you're not necessarily healing anything, but you're being quite remedial and band-aidy. But there are small possibilities of reform and change there. And so then my partner at the time, he got a job in um, uh, Geneva. So me with the four kids, we moved over to, to Europe and lived in France. And, um, and there I couldn't work in my jurisdiction and I had the possibility of pursuing a PhD uh, in something that I was equally passionate about, which was environmental justice. So I pursued this PhD on the relationship between law and nature. And um, it was, uh, the main question I had was, uh, what is our legal relationship with nature? Because then how do we stop the violence that's occurring? How, do, do we have prohibitions that, come, that can come through law to stop this from happening? And so my answer to that was no, our legal system currently, in, in the dominant legal system we're under, doesn't have the sensitivity towards viol the violence that we do towards nature. And, uh, and we also culturally don't necessarily, we've lost that sensitivity as well. So, and then my next question as part of the thesis, which was much bigger than this, it was 120,000 points, but um, how to reform our laws towards you know, a just relationship between humanity and nature. And so the insights that I gained, and this goes into organisational change that I've experienced in Jesuit social services, is that governance, leadership and law reform and cultural transformation, us, us, is it, there's a symbiotic relationship there. And so those two work very much together and you can't do one without the other really if you want good governance and legitimate law. And also understanding, and this is really important for organisations because this is where the eco-conversion becomes collective, is that culture is the human species' most valuable tool of transformation. Uh, survival and justice. So as, as, as kind of, I mean, very explicitly said in Laudato Si, like technology, resource use and governance, they're all predetermined by cultural practices and beliefs. So, so then I came, after 10 years overseas, where I ended up working as a legal consultant after my PhD, I came back and, and was very quickly um, picked up by Julie Edwards to work with Jesuit Social Services as their Ecological Justice Project Officer. And it was like uh, a perfect synchronicity of my initial work in social justice and then my PhD, my time overseas in ecological environmental justice. And then I kind of landed home in this organisation that has spent 40 years, has a long tradition of working at the pointy end of social justice with the most marginalised, the most vulnerable. I mean, it's criminal justice and youth justice is, is one of its main areas. And they work with people with... Uh, multiple traumas, multiple complexities, and those who often fall through the cracks of other agencies uh, and welfare systems. So uh, they work in a tough area. And so then what does it mean to put ecological justice into this space? Like, that was just an intriguing question for me and also answered that initial thing that came out of my thesis, is that this, it's this cultural change that, that we need to work on. So what I um, didn't fully understand when I started there, and so this is not a story of, of my journey with Jesuit social services, this is a story of actually what preceded me before I came back. Because the journey of the organisation with Ecology started way back in 2008. And, uh, um, and so that's when, the, the, uh, with GC35, where it was kind of introduced as a possibility, like what does this organisation, Jesuit social services, do with this call towards Ecology, when we're a social justice organisation, this word social being quite prominent even in, in the, the name of the organisation. And so then there was that conversation that occurred and then it got a little bit more intense and more formed with uh, Healing a Broken World in 2011 and Reconciliation with Creation. And so the conversations that were had 
within the organisation resulted in um, the way of proceeding being um, an approach towards in introducing ecological justice. So there are three domains that were decided to be focused on as a way to go towards this. So the first one is human spirit. And so that, that is our culture, our spirituality, our anthropology. What is, this, what is humanity and who are we? What is our personal place in, in, in these questions? The second one is um, the practice framework, so ecological practice. So that's relational practice and, and how we work and then the actions that come perhaps from exploring that first domain. And then the third one is what most organisations are well aware of when we're all trying to go towards, which is business processes. So the resources that flow in and out of the organisation and an awareness of that and then action around that as well. And so this was all before Laudato C. So then when Laudato C bursts onto the scene, it's like a confirmation that this journey that Julie Edwards took the organisation on wasn't crazy, it was actually prescient. And so and the, the organisation had already become embedded in, in having regular meetings of these three domains. And in, in Laudato C, the, the, there was a, a, a deeper understanding of the connection between environmental and social justice that was really explicit so in the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth almost being one and having an ecological approach becomes a social approach, a social approach becomes an ecological approach. However, there are challenges that come, and one of the things that um, I've heard about and I've experienced in the last year being there in, in the introduction of ecology to an organisation that really is working at a very, a spe very special edge of society is that the word ecology, um, not necessarily for those of us who read Laudato Si, but our organisation isn't full of people who've read Laudato Si at all. And so the word ecology is perhaps too complex. There are questions that, is, and it, it moves, I mean, what does it really mean? It moves from the relationship between a satellite and grains of sand and a tomato growing out there and my grandmother's ear. Like, what, what is ecology? It could be everything, because it is, everything is interconnected. So it was very confusing sometimes for our little brains to understand so what that big leap into interconnectedness. So there was that question. And also the word seems to many people academic, scientific, heavy and then can become meaningless if we don't actually have a, a tangible experience, experiential understanding of ecology. And so what I think was, was noted in, kind of in, a, in some of the workshops that appeared is a, an acknowledgement that many of us, and it's not all of us, many of us uh, are culturally de-skilled in this area and we're, we're linguistically lost, like we've lot, lot, lost a lot of the language over thousands of years of being separated both conceptually and, and, and in our beliefs and practices from nature and considering ourselves to be outside or above it. So this has resulted in um, when we come together, to when they came together at, uh, to have workshops to share about what this might mean for the organisation, a kind of a stumbling through and, and, and not knowing how to name or express something that one might feel in the body or one might feel in the relationships and seemed quite evident but we didn't have words for it. What helped with that um, in the workshops that were done with the board and with other staff over this period of time was doing it at the bush hut and so having reflection times and actually going out under the trees and actually having reflection about what it means to be within an ecological system and not just head straight to the head and the abstract and the policy or whatever but to really ground it in perhaps a different kind of listening to what, what was going and what ecology might mean. But also, particularly for Jesuit social services, there's, and I say this, there's a, there is an understanding, I think it's also in Australia, after being back here for a while, is that green action or environmentalism, I live in Northcote, I'm just gonna preface this, is, is middle class, inner city, hipster, I mean, anybody who's scraping by on the streets, coming out of prison, how on earth, like why, they don't have the time to think about ecology, how does it relate to their lives? And so there is, in our Australian, um, white Australian anyway, understanding of, of what ecology is. It's, uh, we, those who are living on the streets, it's a complete and utter privilege. And so that came from, I spoke to a couple of social workers around that. <clears throat> and it is like, how do we put criminal justice together with ecology? But then as the conversations went forward, and then one part of the process was the regular meetings of the three domains happened over, um, over this period. And so the ecological practice group would meet and there'd be a mixture of all kinds of staff. So you'd have social workers there who are actually doing this work of, of, um, with people exiting prison and working in youth justice and, uh, and settlement. And so 
in exploring what that would mean for their practice, they became what ecology might mean, they became an expansive dialogue where people would share, okay, if I ask people about the places that they've been in their history, that opens up a new kind of conversation, a new perspective into their lives. And it also opens up a new understanding of perhaps what traumas they've gone through, particularly if you're dealing with people, your participants are in settlement and, and things like that. And then it also brings up possible innovations of, um, of what, we, what, we, what is an emerging, uh, I think within the organisation, ecological social practice. So when uh, we had one guy, one staff um, member who started the practice, if he'd pick up people from Malmesbury and, and when he was taking them back into Melbourne, he'd stop by the side of the road, find a really beautiful spot and take about 15, 20 minutes just to breathe it all in and be with that person in that space. And then when they got back in the car, there was a whole different trust and understanding between these two that wasn't there before. So these micro practices started to filter through and this you can see up on there and then we started to disseminate them within the organisation. So now they're shared across the, this richness that comes from this conversation. So then it becomes inculcated in the culture of the organisation and in our notion of what building a just society with participants is. So there also was... Um, so, I mean, one of the things I just want to mention is that the approach to ecology very clearly from the beginning was not to do it as an add-on to go into this deeper space and to not just do the changing light bulbs and recycling. And there sometimes is a fatigue that, oh, why can't we just do that? It's so easy. But one of the things that's recognised also in the Dato C and within the organisation is that we need to go way back to eco-conversion personally and collectively because otherwise, even if we recycle and change light bulbs, we're going to be pe perpetuating the same structures, the same culture, and we'll end up exactly where in, in the same kind of crisis. So the things that went through the organisation was that the, as I said, regular meetings of these three domains, which started to enrich and normalise, you know, our language and 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 acceptance of what ecology might mean for us. Um, it, it became integrated quite specifically into the strategic plan, so which enabled the organisation to start taking it seriously and start to think about accountability towards that principle. And there was training occurred at all staff days, which we have twice a year. And um, also became a very essential part of those who start working at, at the organisation of induction and orientation. So that from the moment you kind of come a welcomed into the organisation, ecological justice, which is social justice and environmental justice together, became part of your understanding of who we were and what we were, were about. And then, um, yeah, so, also, what I've understood, because I only came there a year ago, and it, it has... I'm very excited about the next phase of this. Like, we did a report that was released just uh, last week, kind of canvassing this history and this organisational change that's occurred. But something that I can give witness to is that I am super impressed with how easy it is now to talk about ecological justice within the organisation and for it to be normalised. And this is the thing about cultural change being super important and also having good governance and our good leadership to lead us into this symbiosis between governance and, and the norms that we create as an organisation. And I think the, one of the most uh, amazing things I've seen is the process has been, it's been um, dialogic, it's been very open-ended, people have been able to express their difficulties with the concept, their resistances against it, and it's been slow in some senses, you know, as we were talk, talking about before. But also, if we really want to go towards ecological justice, it's kind of impossible to do it in any other way than ecological. Like, if we really want to live up to what that means, then that means a process that's, that really fits with, with the history of Jesuit social services commitment to relational and restorative justice, which is what ecological justice is all about. So. Thanks, Thanks.